We're really excited to have Waylon Johnson join us today. Waylon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. I'm so excited to be here. Well, for those that don't know you, uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about your background, your job, and uh, where you live? Um, sure. I am a board-certified dermatologist. Um, right now, I work for a group um, working three days a week, and I have um, a husband who's a firefighter um, and two young children. They are three and four. Um, and we live in Leander, Texas, which is about 30 miles north of Austin. Awesome. And I'm like so excited to have you here because there are some really great pearls, learning pearls from your story. And your story hasn't been going on for so long, for very long in real estate. So can you tell everyone what you've been doing in real estate and when your journey really started? Um, sure. So it first started, um, at the end of last year, um, I attended a, a Peter Kim summit and I saw you guys on there. Um, and I mean, everything you were saying about financial freedom and, um, investing in real estate and achieving financial freedom really resonated with me. Um, cause it was something that I had thought, I, I mean, I'd always wanted to achieve, but didn't really know how. And so, um, you know, I saw that you guys were launching the course. And so I um, joined um, the winter 2021. So just this past, I mean, we started, I think, like December, end of December mm -hmm. of 2020 and um, went through kind of February of this year. So that was really my first experience with real estate is that, you know, listen to you guys on the summit. And I actually had a friend who actually took your course, um, maybe about a year prior and had great things to say, and she had done some investing. And so that kind of planted the seed. And then I just decided I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with all my might and just go for it. And, um, so that's where I started. I started actually, let's see, that would be like seven months ago. Um, so that was your question. Where did I start? Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and did you know going in that you were going to do it this big to start out or did you not know how, did you have a sense? No, I didn't know. I didn't know, <laughs> but that's kind of the fun part is, is watching myself develop through the journey. And, um, and, and I know we talked about goals and goal setting, but I think the most powerful thing is actually not necessarily getting to my goal, but, um, the transformation within me that's occurred to be able to reach my goal so far. I mean, obviously I'm really still very early in my journey. Um, but I have actually, um, you know, had is a lot of just personal transformations in going through this whole process growing, um, and so, no, I didn't think that, I mean, when I first set my goal, I set four units in 2021 and then I actually quickly, and after a week I changed it. Cause I said, I think 21 units in 2021 sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do 20, I'm going to do 21 units in 2021. And so, um, you know, I think having that goal helped me to, to really, you know, find the prop, you know, kind of find, help me to kind of find the property that would get me there because I didn't necessarily want to buy 21 single family homes. Mm -hmm. So, so having that goal and that goal setting from the very beginning helped the rest of my journey. So, yeah, so no, I, I didn't, I didn't know, um, you know, and I'd offered on other things and I think we'll talk about this too, but, um, you know, I'd offered on a single family home, like a burr project. I'd offered on a duplex, um, and a 24 unit, a 14 unit and all that. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. before we get into your, your, you know, the one, the offer that you, you did win, um, I, I just want to clarify. So you didn't have any real estate experience, uh, before the course, you didn't have a rental before that or anything. No, Nothing no happened. rentals. <laughs> no, I hadn't read a book, hadn't taken a course. I saw you guys on the summit and I decided to do it. What, can, I, can I ask, what was it about real estate that kind of drew you in and got you interested? Well, I liked that, um, there, that, that there are defined roadmaps, for ex example, that you guys teach. Um, and, and there's multiple ways to make money, but there's, there's, there's proven evidence-based. We all like evidence-based things. There are evidence-based ways that have been proven through time 
to be successful in real estate. Um, and I knew that if I could just learn that roadmap and just do it, just follow it, just do it, that I could be successful as well. So it wasn't something that I would have to innovate and necessarily on my own. Obviously there's innovations within the journey and um, solutions to kind of find within the journey. But in terms of the overall um, roadmap, I felt like, um, yeah, I, it was kind of a, um, a, a time-tested and evidence-based way to, to be successful. And um, so I like, like that part, part of real estate. And then I think just the accessibility, I mean, the course was coming up. This was designed for people like me. The, your course was designed for people like me. Um, um, and yeah, just why? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so then tell us about uh, the, uh, you know, you said that you put in some offers, uh, you didn't get those, but tell us about the, the, uh, the deal that you did, you did end up getting an uh, offer accepted on. Okay. Um, well, um, Let's see. And there, there's there's actually some learning points into the deals I didn't get offers on. But if you yeah. want to focus on, no, no. no, tell us, tell us about that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, the first um, offer that I made was an all cash offer on a duplex um, in San Antonio, and I lost it to a higher financed offer. It was just it was a strong offer. It was all full uh, a full price all cash offer, but I lost that deal, and I was. I was disappointed. Um, but because I had made that offer with that agent, less than a week later, he brings me this 24 unit, um, slightly outside my searchable reach in Redfin, you know, slightly, I would not have known about this property had, had I not placed the offer with this agent, lost it. And then I, he was, I was on his radar and he sent it to me. Um, I offered on it a, a full, I offered a full price offer. This thing was like $1.9 million. Um, and, um, offered it right away. However, we had, the agent, and I had made the offer based on the 2019 profit and loss statements. And actually we, we, within a couple of days, we had received the 2020 profit and loss statements and we found out, well, you know, 2020 year wasn't a great year for some people. And so my agent had recommended that we actually take that offer back and offer a lower price because he thought it was worth less. Mm -hmm. So I did do that. And we actually lost the deal to a higher price offer. And that was another learning point for me because, you know, and this is what you guys teach in the course too, is that you, you know, lock it up and then negotiate later. Don't negotiate up front. That was my mistake. And I learned that one. So for this leads me to the property that I actually, um, that I actually got. Um, so I, I was very disappointed on that, on, in that, but, um, I, uh, kept just searching for properties and, uh, found on my own on LoopNet um, a 14 unit. Um, I texted my agent that day. I said, I want a full price. I want to put a full price offer in. We put the full price offer in, we had it accepted. So I learned from every step. Mm -hmm. Um, and by then this agent was the same agent I had put the other two offers on in. So we were familiar with each other. You know, we had some efficiencies there and, um, yeah, we put, put the offer in full price, locked it up and, uh, yeah. Amazing. That's how I got it. Yeah. And, and we, we hear this so often, right. Is that when you, when you put in that offer, you know, you are top of mind for that agent. And mm -hmm. when that agent gets a deal, a deal comes across his or her desk, uh, they think of you because you're top of mind. You just put in an offer on a different property and you didn't get it. They, maybe they feel bad that you didn't get mm -hmm. it. And so they, they think of you. And so, you know, we just hear this so often. Uh, I don't think people realize that so many people sit on the sidelines and don't even put in offers, but the offer actually, even if you don't get it can lead to your next deal. And, and I think a lot of the other, the other lesson that I see is that people put in offers, they lose it, they get so disappointed and they get down, right? Mm -hmm. And then they kind of give up, right? And so that's not, that's not, not at all what you did, you know, you were kind of, you know, onto the next deal. And I love that. And then I love how the duplex led to the 24 unit, and then finally led to the 14 unit. Uh, and then you worked with the same agent. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, on the 24 unit, I'm, I'm just real curious, like, you know, that was a, that was a big amount. So like, how mm -hmm. did you go from like a duplex to <laughs> you know, a $2 million, 24 unit property, like, you know, was, was there like, you know, was there fear involved there? Like, you know, if so, how did you overcome it? Yeah. I think what I've learned is that 
uh, if if they're here, it probably means you're growing. That's what I've learned. And, um, but then if there's too much fear, then to maybe examine the thoughts of, well, what's causing this fear? Because I, I didn't have a thought that, oh, I would become homeless or something, because that would probably scare me. Um, maybe there was some a healthy level of anxiety, but I wouldn't actually say that I felt fearful um, because I actually knew the steps to underwrite the deal before making the offer. You know, I, I could just see rationally how this would make so much sense and why I was so excited to actually get this deal because it's just going to, it's just going to be so, I mean, it's going to, it's just going to be an amazing deal. I mean, the cash on cash was great. Um, it was in a, um, a, a location that had STR and LTR, even medium term rental, sorry, long-term rental, short-term rental and medium-term rental opportunities. Um, they were all single floor. There was like, you know, the 14 unit was all, you know, one floor buildings. And so it even had like, you know, possible assisted living or, you know, other, you know, uh, just, there was just so many options with that property. Um, but I don't think I felt much fear because I learned how to vet deals and I thought it was a great deal. So I want to also highlight, um, the, the concept of lock it up here for people who have never heard of it. Mm -hmm. So really it's a concept that in this really hot market, um, if a deal pops up, oftentimes it's going to be gone in a matter of a couple hours to a real estate investor. Um, it's going to be pending and it's unavailable. And so the idea is sometimes you're going to offer just list price. Sometimes you're even going to offer more than list price just to get that property. And you have the ability as a real estate investor to negotiate after you've had the inspection. And that's when you lower the price. And I think this is one of the best stories we've ever heard of negotiation. So Mm -hmm. I really wanted to highlight what you did. Okay. So we'll talk about the 14 unit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the offering memorandum, the 14 unit was supposed to be three, three bedrooms, um, uh, one, two bedroom, and then the remaining are were one bedroom. So 10, one bedrooms. So when we get their inspection day, we actually find out that that was not the case. We find this out on inspection inspection day. It turns out the listing broker hadn't actually even walked the property. Clearly the, the seller had been to the property before many times, but maybe didn't ever review the offering memorandum. So we find out that instead of three bedroom units, all of those three were actually just one bedroom units. And then instead of like the 10 plex, plex being all, um, I, sorry, I should back up the 14 out of the 14, 14 unit property, there was a 10 plex and then there was a four plex on adjacent tax parcels. They actually share the same parking lot, but they're on sort of separate tax parcels, but they share the same parking lot. Um, and so um, the 10 plex was marketed as being all one bedroom units, but it turns out that it was eight one bedroom units and two studios. The fourplex was marketed as being three three bedroom units and one two bedroom unit, but it turns out there were three one bedroom units, mm. and then there was a two bedroom unit. So um, uh, part of the negotiation was really calculating: well, how much does that mistake cost? Cost me how? I mean, how much lower in value is this property because it cannot bring in the income that a th- that the three three bedrooms can bring in? It can, those three bedrooms are now at the one bedroom rate, and the the one bedrooms on the tenplex or you know the the studios. Um, there was two studios, but they were marketed as one bedroom. So it you know we got a little bit. We actually calculated that it uh, the value was approximately one hundred and eighty thousand dollars less, mm-hmm. just for the mismarketing. And that's just thinking and about the calculation. Yeah. It's a complex calculation. And yeah. for, for newer investors, you know, it's, it's, you will learn this eventually, but it deals with the market cap rate and, and what things are selling for in that area. Um, and so she was able to calculate, you know, the decrease in rental income that she was going to get. She was able to calculate how much lower the price should be on the property. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then, um, the 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 rents were were way under market like half half of half of market rents and then there was um there it was about 30 percent vacant 70 percent occupied so it was a um, distressed property i mean there was a there's a, there was a 
there's a laundry, there's actually two laundry rooms, but both of them were not working. And that was the main complaint. I was during inspections, I was talking to the tenants, hey, how, you know, what would you like to see improved in this property? And almost everybody said the laundry. Um, also on property um, were 15 storage units, which we actually, um, they didn't, we, there was actually more than we thought, 15 storage units and actually a little um, a manager's office. So um, this, it was, it's nestled in a really nice, quiet neighborhood surrounded by all single family homes. Mm -hmm. So that, and it's so quiet. I mean, being there on inspection day, it's just was so quiet. There was hardly any traffic. I mean, crime, like, like zero, I mean, the crime, crime maps, none, zero or very little, um, very little crime, quiet. And, um, so let's see, where was I? Um, oh, and so during inspection day, we also had, you know, the all hands on deck day. So we had our contractors there and we actually had a two different contractors come at different times, mm -hmm. one in the morning, one in the afternoon um, to give bids on a complete one to completely do, redo the interiors. And then of, of course they did inspection repair bids too, um, which we received and all together, it totaled about $300,000. So more than we thought. Mm -hmm. Now we did the other thing that we learned, I learned from you guys is to actually give contractors the permission to give me a worst case scenario bid. And so I was able to actually work with my agent to trim the fat off of that uh, bid. And there was some electrical work that was bid out for really negotiation purposes, but really didn't need to be done immediately. And you know, so in trimming the fat, we got the kind of bids down to, we think about 220,000. So my, yeah, my, my, my goal, um, but I think before inspections was to actually negotiate somehow go to inspections and find a hundred thousand dollars. I wanted to find a hundred thousand dollars to negotiate off. That was my goal. Wanted a hundred thousand dollars off. I was going to find it. I decided we're going to go there and we're going to find some way to negotiate hundred thousand dollars off. But with the mismarketing and with the inspection bids, um, I decided I wanted to be all in, I forgot to mention the purchase price, uh, 980,000 was the initial offer price. I wanted to kind of be all in for that amount. I thought I could trim the fat down to 220. So I, I actually, we counter offered at 750. And they came back to us and, and said, we'll do it for 780. So $200,000 off. With that, the cash on cash should be 15, maybe 16%. Um, so yeah. it would have been higher without the mismarketing because the mismarketing, you know, we're not going to be able to bring up, we, you know, as much income as if they were actually th truly three bedroom units, but I was, you know, very pleased. Yeah. And I, I just want to reiterate, this is in a very hot market and this is in Texas, which is killer hot um, yeah. that you managed to, you know, get a property, negotiate $200,000 off and, and, you know, 15% cash on cash is incredible. Um, and are you going for real estate professional tax status as well? Yes. And the tax savings are also incredible. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, um, so about just my decision to be real estate professional. Oh, no, or... no. About, about the savings that you kind of estimate from this one. Oh, property. okay. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I mean, I estimate to have maybe a hundred thousand dollars in tax savings mm -hmm. or this year, maybe not from, um, sorry, maybe not from this property alone. Um, because I know we'll get to this, but I have another property under contract. Um, so, but yeah, for, for, for this year, because I'll be real estate professional. And I, and I think I, I would actually would have gotten it with the 14 unit alone, but I had another opportunity come up and when opportunity strikes, you just, you know, snap it up. So, um, but, um, but uh, yeah. So is that what you were asking about? About, uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Amazing. What will yeah. equate to several thousand dollars per month in tax savings? Yeah. And then the other thing that I think uh, I wanted to point out was 15% cash on cash return is amazing. But the other part of this is as you renovate the units uh, and raise the rents and you raise that cash flow, the other effect is that you're raising the value of this property significantly, mm -hmm. right? And, and we were just talking about how you calculate the, um, the decrease in value from, from those uh, units being mismarketed. Well, you, you can use that same calculation the other way. And when you raise the rents and the income that the property generates, the value of that property goes up as well. Do you have a sense of what this property, 
will be worth after you do all the renovations and get the cash flow up to 15%? Yes. So um, I bought it at 780. I think at the end, we're actually coming in under budget, believe it or not, after renovating five units. I can't wow. believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going over budget. I can't believe you're going under budget. Yeah. Um, well, and we can talk about a little about that too, because I've yeah. been buying materials. Um, maybe that's part of it. I've been putting some sweat, sweat equity into it or you know, um, but, um, I, uh, I mean, at the low end, I think I'll be able to sell it for 1.65 million at the high end over 2 million. Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah. Cause it, yeah. So it's, and, and so, yeah, I mean, all in, I, 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 I may be in, let's see, 780 purchase price, probably about 200,000 in rehab. So maybe a little under a million total, um, investment and, you know, probably be able to sell it for 1.6 to a little over two. Wow. In hopefully 12 to 18 months. Yeah. That's what's amazing. Yeah. In such a yeah. short amount of time that, so, so talk to us about the, uh, how you got those renovation costs down, uh, because for those who don't know, you know, lumber prices have gone up. Um, the supply of labor is extremely tight. So, uh, so contractors are charging, uh, a, a, a lot more than, than normal. So can you talk to us about how you're, how you're coming under budget? Well, I think it started with getting a couple of contractor bids and, um, the contractor that I'm using actually, um, in, in talking about the importance of relationships in real estate, um, I found through my property manager, who's actually been managing property in the San Antonio area for 20 plus years. So he knows a lot, he knows a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and this, these particular contractors that, um, are working on my property, um, they, they really, really rely heavily on him. So he takes care of them and they take care of him by keeping labor rates affordable, um, or, you know, competitive. And so, um, so there's that. And then, um, I have, um, been ordering almost all of my own materials with their help, which I've learned a lot through that process. Um, and it sort of saves on the material markup because they would have marked it up by, I mean, 10 to 30% I've seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so of course there's an opportunity cost to think about. So there's upsides and there's downsides. Um, and it does take a lot of time to sort so when I'm looking for toilet seats, I'm looking on Amazon, I'm looking at Lowe's, and I'm looking at Home Depot. <laughs> and so imagine that for every single thing, I mean, uh, in the interiors, I mean, um, so, so yeah, so, um, but I, I think I've saved some that way, because I don't think contractors would be doing that. I don't think contractors would be really price comparing and trying to find the highest quality. And I mean, reading reviews on Amazon, like, is this kitchen faucet? Does it work? I mean, is it going to break down? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, but I've been able to do that. And I mean, I think I've, I think I got the kitchen faucet for a third of what I would have paid at Lowe's or Home Depot on Amazon. Uh, and it's a great like pull out spray or everything. And it works great. Um, so, um, I think that's, that may be how I'm coming in under budget. And then, you know, I've, like I said, I trimmed the fat. I did some things that, um, like the electrical doesn't need to be updated. It's safe. Um, and it's not a hazard. So we're, we've decided not to, not to, uh, repair anything, uh, you know, there at this point. Um, so, so I think, yeah. Great. Yeah. And I want to highlight one thing you said, which was good people, know good people, right? Your property mm -hmm. manager knew the good contractors. They had that relationship. Everything's about relationships. And so now you have a good contractor because I think a lot of people starting out think, oh my gosh, I need all these team members. I don't know how I'm going to do this long distance. You know, how am I going to go find 10 people? But the fact is that you find one or two good people and they know good people and that builds your team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amazing. So uh, for those who are interested in uh, seeing the renovations that uh, Waylon is, uh, is undertaking, uh, be sure to check out the renovation video uh, uh, later on here in the, uh, uh, in the day. And so uh, uh, where we, we're going to go over the, you know, the 14 unit and then the before and after. So it's a, it's really a pretty amazing transformation. Mm -hmm. So awesome. So yeah, then, then, so then this deal, uh, you're, uh, where are you now in the, uh, in the 14 unit? Are you almost done renovations? Uh, uh, are you, uh, uh, have you rented the units? 
Yes. And yeah, well, yes. Um, so am I almost done? We, we have 14 units total. We are done with five. We're working on the sixth unit and this is seven weeks after closing. I was ordering materials a week before we closed Wow! <laughs> so that we could start day one. And I think we started technically day three <sighs> because it fell because we closed on a Friday. So we started the following Monday. Um, so, uh, let's see. So yeah, so we've renovated five out of the, uh, 14 units. Um, we've leased up two of them at double the pre-renovation rate. And in addition to, um, charging now for storage, there's 15 storage units we're charging. Um, I did some market research and, um, uh, for on-site storage, we decided to rent one storage unit for $35 a month and then two for 60. So um, those newly leased up tenants have uh, each taken one storage unit as well as um, their, their rents went from 400 to 795 plus paying pet rent, which we, they weren't before and storage. And the storage you didn't even know was there until you did inspection. So yes. sometimes there's hidden value. There's other ways to make income that you don't even notice until inspection day. And you're putting, you know, your offer on your property. You've got to lock it up to actually ever find out that you could have made all that extra money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it made up for their mismarketing a little bit. <laughs> but you didn't tell them that, of course. <laughs> no, not at all. No, no, not at all. <laughs> So then tell us how, uh, how this property led to your next property, because you were mentioning another property. Can you tell us about that deal? Yeah. So, um, I, um, tell you, I mentioned, I was working with property manager for my, for the, for, for the 14 unit and he manages a, uh, property out in, um, Hondo, which is about 30 miles West of San Antonio, still considered within the San Antonio MSA. Um, but it was actually not on my radar for Redfin searches or anything. Um, and even like, you know, loop net and all that, like it, I wasn't circling it. So, um, I would not have known about the 16 unit, um, coming up for sale. Um, uh, and my property manager alerted me to it. We made a full price offer that day. Um, and it was accepted. And now I'm, you know, we've gone through inspections. We negotiated, um, the, the offer price was 955. And we negotiated um, there. We didn't, we in, initially tried to get like 70, $78,000 off that exact amount because of uh, repair bids and things. And um, we agreed on $40,000 off of 955. So 915, which I was actually ecstatic about because I would have bought it for 955. They don't know that, mm -hmm. but I would have bought it for 955. So I was really pleased with the $40,000 haircut. And um, I'm disappointed you didn't get another $200,000 off. I was, I was kind of disappointed too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the expectation I know. yeah. I want to make you guys proud. Yeah. Next time I, I, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So, okay. So we great should close on that uh, next month. And this one is, is this one also a pretty heavy lift? Like you're going to rehab it and everything? It's not as heavy because the, the units are actually pretty in pretty good shape for the market. So we don't want to over improve either. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's some, there's a little bit of work to be done because there's three driveways going in and um, they're all like really, they're made of asphalt and they've, and there's a drainage dish there and there's, they're kind of potholed. So we actually got a bid to fix all three, but in reality, what I'm going to do, and that came up to like, 55,000, it's expensive because it's a concrete repair of three driveways instead of asphalt because concrete is going to last a lot longer, um, is I'm going to um, demo two of them and sod it, which would be a lot cheaper than repairing it with concrete. And then we're going to have just the one driveway. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to TxDOT about it. I mean, I got, I mean, they actually prefer it because they don't want too much entrances and exits off the main highway or the main street. And so they're, um, so it yeah. So even though I got the bid to fix all three, I'm actually just going to fix one, mm -hmm. but they don't, the sellers don't know that. Yep. Beautiful. Awesome. That's amazing. And so, okay. So then you said you finished the course in February and then mm -hmm. basically you're now going to be up at 30 units, like six months later, seven months later. Is that right? <laughs> 30 six months later. Seven months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. 30 units in seven, seven months. <laughs> Pretty awesome. And so this one also uh, will be 
uh, will help towards uh, sheltering uh, income as well, right? Absolutely, because I'll be able to, um, I will, um, as long as the cost aggregation studies come um, in line with the predictions, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'll be able to shelter not only all of my husband and I's income from this year, but probably most of it next year, or at least a significant portion, which means that I would have the option to do reps again for next year or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah options. Yeah. So we, yeah. Cause I'll have some carry forward, carry forward losses. Yeah. And for those who don't know, don't, don't know about reps and cost segregation, we'll have some links below so you can read some articles about it. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, amazing. Well, very cool. Yeah. And I think it all started with your goal setting, right? Yeah. Right in the beginning, knowing how many units you wanted and 21 then, units and, and, and past you, that. Right. And in going in looking for a hundred thousand in the haircut also, right. I mean, really led you, I think to to really look and put a lot of focus and energy into finding ways to, to get a discount. So amazing job. So what are you planning to do with your real estate portfolio in the future? Do you think you're going to keep expanding next year? What do you think you want to do? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my, my other goal is a hundred units in five years, but I now think I can probably do it in three. Um, so we'll see. So yeah, that means I have to buy more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's also the possibility of, of doing a 1031, right. With the yes. property, the first, like the 14 unit or this, uh, this new six, 16 unit, taking those proceeds and, and putting it into a bigger property. So yeah. Or it, a cash out refinance because mm -hmm. you're going to have for so much appreciation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. There was a little bit that kind of was a part of the story that I didn't get to touch on yet. Do you, do you guys, um, remember the bridge loan and the lending mm -hmm. part? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, Tell everyone what a bridge loan is. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So this was the other incredible thing that I've learned is that shopping for lenders is, is just as important as shopping for the property. I feel like, um, because, so because my 14 unit was such a heavy lift, you know, it was 70% occupied. So 30% vacant under market rents, way under market rents. Um, you know, I was told by a couple of uh, brokers that this was going to need a bridge loan or essentially a high interest, um, hard money loan, temporary, like a short term, temporary, probably about a year um, long loan at I got received quotes for anywhere between eight and eight and nine percent um, that would finance the rehab. Um, but that would be a high interest loan for that, you know, period of time. And then that's what a, essentially a bridge loan is, is a high interest loan for short period of time. And then once the property is stabilized, so it's fully occupied and it's at market rents, then refinance that into a longer term loan. So, you know, I, through your course, have learned to ask myself questions like, um, is it really true that I can only qualify for a bridge loan? is it possible that I can get actually qualify somehow for uh, a traditional commercial loan for the property? So I continued establishing relationships um, and uh, found a broker who believed in me because I also had no experience. Mm -hmm. I had zero experience. That was our first question. What experience do you have? Well, I've taken a really amazing course that I've learned a lot from that's it, you know? <laughs> and so, um, um, <laughs> and so, uh, so they believed in me, which is actually really touching when I think about it, but they, I mean, I got them to believe in me because of the pro forma package I put together. You know, I called apartment complexes. I asked them what their finishes were, granite, laminate, LVP, what kind of flooring do you have? What rents, what's your occupancy? What's your vacancy? I put that all in a package. I led a horse to water and um, made it easy for them to see that this property doing these things will improve it to this point to end. And so, uh, so I, 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 I actually, uh, not only did I get a, um, a, uh, just a traditional commercial loan, they finance their fi they financed 75% of the rehab. Wow. wow. And gave me an interest only period for 12 months. Incredible. Wow. And I got to say the starting point was believing in yourself, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. you believed yeah. you were capable of doing this, mm -hmm. you know, had this knowledge and then just 
put, put some effort into it. So mm-hmm. first you had to believe in yourself. And then that's pretty powerful that you, as a first time investor, you know, were able to convince a lender to do that for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think people realize uh, how much a uh, lender requires experience, prior experience. Mm-hmm. And, and it kind of for makes you go properties. Yeah. For the big properties. Right. Right. Yeah. For the one to four units, it's a different story. What we're talking about is commercial loans. Uh, and in the commercial loan world, you know, it's all about your experience is a big, big factor. Uh, and the fact that you were able to kind of get past that is, is, a, is a huge thing. You basically figured out how can I, and you went out and did it. Yeah. Very cool inspirational yeah it is really and I, and I think for any naysayers I think you know um nobody you don't have to have anybody else believing you if you believe in you awesome yeah so any con- closing advice I mean that in itself is incredible yeah, advice right, right, but yeah. any other closing advice for people who are thinking about getting into real estate you know haven't ever even considered it before or are scared any any thoughts You know, I would say that sometimes I think people get tripped up with not knowing how they're going to do something. And I think that if you actually just have the desire or motivation to do something, you will figure out how to get there. And yeah. And so, yeah. And, and I mean, I think I I truly believe that your course really lays it out in a very, very easy to follow way you know, for somebody that has no experience, if you just have the desire, if you just have the motivation, you will learn the how you'll figure that out. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's like the, we, we call it the tyranny of the how you, you can get so stuck in the how in your head. Um, but sometimes what's, well, what's most important, I think is the why. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah. And, and you know what you want, you're going to get yep. there. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Waylon, for being here and sharing your experiences with people. And I'm sure it's an inspiration to many. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and be sure to check out the uh, renovation video that we mentioned earlier. So you can see the before and after of this 14 unit uh, project. It's a really, really cool transformation. Thank you, Waylon. Thank you guys for having me so excited. And thank you for what you do. You guys do truly you're changing lives. Thank you.